This is example 10 in our integration topic. We're doing integration by substitution. Part two, part two meaning it's not quite as straightforward as part one. If you haven't had a look at example nine, then watch it first, please. Although this is a, a different type of example, it's not really based on nine, but what it does uh, require us to do is to, to think really carefully about how we're going to do this. The advantage of this type of question is that it actually gives you what to substitute. It's not that we have to find out what we're going to use as a substitution. It gives you it here. So we've got this integral of x squared over the square root of 4 minus x squared with respect to x. And we're told that we want to use the substitution x equals 2 sine theta. Uh, the reason for that of introducing a trig term when there isn't one is that we're going to end up using uh, some trig identities. And of course, the, the kind of key one that we would uh, use is the idea that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. That's kind of uh, fundamental identity that we would use in this kind of situation. Although we do have other ones like the double angle formula and stuff. So we'll keep an eye out for them. Um, so we want to actually recreate this integral in terms of theta. Okay, that's our new variable. So we're going to have to replace all of the x terms with uh, theta terms, and we're going to have to replace dx with some d theta. So we're going to have to think about all these things. So let's look at the d theta. But in other words, we're going to think about differentiating x. Um, so we've got the derivative of x with respect to theta. Okay, if we differentiate 2 sine x, we get 2 cos theta. If we multiply both sides by d theta, we get dx equals 2 cos theta d theta. Okay, um, so um, well, that's us got something that we can substitute. So instead of in my new integral, instead of dx, I'm going to write down that. Okay. Now, the rest of it is a wee bit more straightforward, uh, but as we can actually say, okay, that's going to be the same as x squared on the top. That's quite straightforward. We've got 2 sine theta squared. Okay, so we can put this over a wee bit here because we're going to substitute uh, dx with times 2 cos theta d theta. Okay. Um, it's this bit on the bottom of the fraction. We're going to substitute in. Now, we could do it in the uh, the working of it, or we could do it kind of at the side. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to just write down 4 minus x squared. I'm going to simplify this outside of the the main working, just so that I can see what's going on. x squared is going to be 2 sine theta squared, which is 4 minus 4 sine squared theta, which is, if I take a common factor, I get that 4 times 1 minus sine squared theta, and that's going back to this identity here. We know that uh, cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta, and therefore we can simplify 4 minus x squared into just 4 times cos squared theta. And that's good because we've actually got to substitute over here the square root of 4 minus x squared now becomes 4 cos squared theta. You notice that's a squared term. So I can simplify this by my numerator becomes 4 sine squared theta. My denominator becomes 2 cos theta. That's me find the square root of it. And I'm multiplying by 2 cos theta with respect to theta. And multiplying by 2 cos theta and dividing by 2 cos theta uh, are opposite or inverse operations. So in actual fact, I've simplified my integration calculation 4 sine squared theta d theta.
Okay. I, I think I've simplified it, but I've got a wee bit of a, a problem because I can't actually integrate sine squared theta. No. We can differentiate sine squared theta, but we can't integrate it. We need another rule, trig rule, uh, with regards to angles. It goes back to the kind of double angle uh, formula that says, let's see, uh, cos... 2 theta equals uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. That was one of the double angle formulae. And if we rearrange that, we end up with uh, 2 sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos 2 theta. So sine squared theta is a half times 1 minus 2 cos 2 theta. Okay, we're going to put that in. I didn't say it was going to be an easy example. So we can say we've now got 4 times a half times 1 minus cos 2 theta. D theta. Nearly there. We're nearly at a point of actually being able to integrate it. The, the 4 times a half is 2, uh, so we've got a multiplier of 2, which gives us 2 minus 2 cos 2 theta with respect to theta, and we can actually do that integration. Because we're integrating with respect to the variable theta, 2 integrates to 2 theta, and here we've got cos 2 theta is going to integrate to or negative 2 cos theta, 2 cos theta integrates to sine, so it's going to be negative 2 sine 2 theta. We've got to be careful to divide through by the derivative of this uh, inside function 2, so we're going to be divided by 2 plus c, which gives us 2 theta, uh, just minus sine 2 theta plus c. Okay, now the reality is, I'm going to rewrite uh, that, and I'll show you what, what's happening here. So we, we started off with the integral of x squared over the square root of 4 minus x squared dx. Okay, And at the moment, we've got the answer 2 theta minus sine 2 theta plus c. And the truth of the matter is, that's really all we would normally do, because we're about to look at how we would change... Uh, the limits of a uh, um, definite integral is the word I'm looking for, so that we could not bother substituting. The, the thing is here that we've actually changed the variable to theta, um, and I'm going to quickly show you how you would change it back, but it's so, we've already done so much here, we would actually not substitute it back at this point in time, okay? But if you're interested, uh, I'll just finish it off, but as long as you could get to that point there. And what we'll learn to do next is we'll learn to change, if we've got uh, you know values up here, it would be probably pi values, but what we would do is we would actually change the limits to suit our variable uh, theta. Okay, so we'll stop that there. Uh, if you wanted to change it back, which you won't be asked to do, uh, we already know that from the original thing, what we've got, x is 2 sine theta. x is 2 sine theta. So if we wanted to substitute in terms of theta, uh, we could say that theta is equal to, well, sine theta is x over 2. So theta is the inverse sine of a half x. So that's me got a substitution for that. Uh, with regards to sine uh, 2 theta, uh, that's a, a, a tricky one because we would then have, we could say that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. Uh, we already know that 2 sine theta is x. That's great. 2 sine theta is x. Cos theta, well, 
uh, or that's going to be the square root of, because cos squared is 1 minus sine squared uh, theta in there. And we already know uh, that uh, yeah, sine theta is x over 2. So we could say that it's 1 minus x over 2 squared. As I said, it's a wee bit scary. And that way, if I take a common factor there in the not a common factor. If I were to change 1 to 4 over 4, I could do that. Take out the quarter out of that square root sign to give a half x times the square root of 4 minus x squared. I think that would do me for uh, sine 2x. So in actual fact, the proper answer here, if I was changing it back, would be, where's my uh, cos? I've got that, I've got two lots of that. So I've got 2 times the inverse sine of x over 2 minus what I worked out there, a half x times the square root of 4 minus x squared plus c. Okay, that is... Uh, far more advanced than we need to, to go. Uh, what I want to just make sure is that you can get to that point there by substitution involving a trig expression. Okay.